here we have an example of a lower quality air creep product and a higher quality, higher strength air creep product. And I thought I'd take this opportunity to explain kind of the difference between them and how you would go about making air creep that is stronger or better versus one that is inferior or weaker. <laughs> Aircrete is such a niche or unique concrete application. There's very little information out there on this product. And so I want to just give you a couple of tips that will help get you started down the path towards learning to work with this stuff. Truly, trial and error is pretty much the only way to do it because whatever you're doing with this is probably unique to you, uh, you and only you. So it's going to be hard to give you instructions on how to do that precisely. So let me just give you some general instructions on how you can produce better, more consistent and stronger air creep. So I guess the first thing that I'll talk about is the main difference between these, aside from color that you can see here, is one of them has sunken in, which is this one. You can see it kind of around the edges and maybe it's more visible to me than to you on the camera. This one did not sink in at all. This one did. What gives? What's the difference? Well, this one was made with a lower density foam versus a higher density foam. And how you would tell, well, put the same amount in a bucket and weigh them both. The higher density one should weigh more than the lower density one. So a high density foam might look like shaving cream. That might be an example that you could uh, picture in your mind right away. Whereas this one here was made from the very first uh, bubbles I created with my Aircrete generator and they were of lighter consistency because I hadn't dialed in my, uh, my air and my um, Aircrete liquid mixture ratio yet. And so it produced a somewhat lower quality foam. I still used that foam in the creation of these Aircrete panels, but as a result, it's sunken in at the edges. I would say it would be a good habit anytime that you're creating foam for production of Aircrete, put it in a, in a bucket and go ahead and scrape the top 15, 10 to 15% right off the top of that and get rid of that. That lighter stuff that's come to the top is an example of a lower density foam. You can have a lower density foam and a higher density foam within the same bucket that you're working with. And that's exactly what's happened to me here. And so if you want to avoid that problem, go ahead and get rid of that top layer once you've created all your air or once all, you've created all of your foam, the lighter stuff kind of sat on top, the heavier stuff went to the bottom. And so get rid of that top 10, 15% and you should be working with a better, more consistent, denser foam to make your air creep from. So what else can you do to make a higher quality, stronger air creep? Well, here's something that you can do. And I don't see this mentioned that much, but using a vegetable glycerin product to me produces better, more consistent results in terms of the quality of the foam that I'm generating, but more so the longevity of that foam. The longevity of the foam that you create is very important, of course, because if your all of your bubbles dissipate and go away before the cement is actuated and hardened, well, then your aircrete collapses, and that can definitely happen. And if you do a lot of trial and error with aircrete, it's probably going to happen to you too. So how do you avoid it? Well, one of the things that you do is you add vegetable glycerin to your liquid mixture. Your liquid mixture is going to be soap and water or Drexel and water. And to that, you add a small amount. How much? Well, it depends on your application. But I can tell you for my application, this tiny little bottle here, 118 milliliters, this is 20 or 30 uh, times that I would be generating foam. So a little goes a long way. Basically, you've got a big bottle of water and soap. To that, I would add a small splash of vegetable glycerin. It's going to make your bubbles last longer. So we've definitely touched on a few important things here that is going to give you a higher quality, stronger air creep but we haven't touched on the most important one and the biggest thing between these two panels here. One of these, this one here, is just the Aircrete product and the cement slurry mixed together. This one, on the other hand, in addition to having some integral color added to it, has the addition of fibers. Glass fibers, when mixed in with a concrete mortar, any kind of mix like that is going to add tensile strength. It works the same way that adding steel inside of concrete works, but you know, it looks a little different. Instead of one singular mat of steel, you have kind of like this matrix of fibers that all interconnect in a 3D pattern. 
ultimately providing you tensile strength, which is so, so important. All concrete applications suffer from a lack of tensile strength. They're very strong com for compressive strength. You can't crush concrete, but if you put it under tension, it breaks very readily. And adding the glass fibers to your aircrete mix is going to give you vastly improved strength characteristics versus any air aircrete product lacking a tensile strength increaser like steel or glass fibers in the mix. So you're using a high density foam, you're using vegetable glycerin so it lasts a long time, you're using glass fibers in your mix to make it stronger. Is there anything else you can do to produce better, stronger, more consistent aircrete results? I think something that I would recommend for you to do is explore using an accelerant in the mortar mix that you use to create the slurry that you mix with your bubbles or your foam. When you make aircrete, you have a cement component and you have a foam, foam component. If you use an accelerant inside of the mortar or cement component, that will cause that to actuate faster. It will harden faster. The initial onset setup time will be reduced. That's very important when you're dealing with foam as the aggregate in your mix. If the bubbles all dissipate before the cement hardens, your piece sinks, you lose some of the bulk of your yield, it's not good in terms of air crete. So one of the things that you can do is you accelerate the rate at which your cement mix hardens and that way you need less working time for the bubbles to last. So these tricks all used together are going to give you better, more consistent results when you're working with aircrete and you will achieve a product that is stronger and more stable. I hope you found this information helpful.